Okay, what I want to show you today is how I make graphics like this and turn them into vector graphics, essentially, usually for t-shirt graphics. Uh, this is a graphic in a collection called the Icons Collection of Graphic and Logo Templates. But I'm going to show you my process, and it's a pretty quick and easy process for creating vector t-shirt graphics. So when I'm starting out, I'll typically work on a tracing pad, and the reason for this is I like the tooth of tracing paper. So it kind of has a quality to it where you can sketch out graphics and you can kind of build up line work and you know, it's not, it's not too permanent because um, it erases really well. And you can also draw over drawings. You can also flip things over to look and see if your perspective looks good because sometimes things get a little wonky or messed up. Um, you know, if you're just, if you're drawing and just li looking at it from one angle. So just to give you an example of that, um, let's see, here is little Cobra and I can't remember which version of that. This is probably the first one cause it's the messiest. So I sketched that out, drew on top of it to kind of figure out the line work a little bit better. And then eventually got to this one where I kind of made things a little more symmetrical, things like that. The pencil I use, if you're interested, it's a Pentel Graph Gear 1000 mechanical pencil 0.5. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you. Um, with drawing skeletons and skulls and stuff like that, and actually human figures, I use an app called Skelly. Now I think there's probably a few of these kinds of apps out there, but what you can do is you can pose the figure and you can also zoom in here. Um, you know, if you go in too close, it sometimes gets a little distorted, kind of like wide angle style, but this is good if like, you know, I, I have another design similar to the one I showed you and it's a front view and you can also change the lighting the light angle uh, just for good reference. If you notice a lot of really good illustrators and artists, they'll have like a skull or something on their shelf, you know, just like a, like a toy skull, just for reference. Um, same thing, a lot of people have like little mannequins or maquettes for figure drawing, so you can kind of pose the figure and see what things are gonna look like. So what I do is I'll just sketch this thing up till I like it take a photo of that with my camera, and then I'll bring that into Procreate, which is a drawing app on the iPad. So this is, um, this is that drawing. Let's see how many layers I have. So I have a bunch of different layers in here. And I'll just, as I'm going along, I'll build things up. Like, I think I tried a version that had more shading and I didn't like it. So it's good to kind of, if you get to a point where you like the drawing, but you want to experiment, you can add, add in layers. But what I'll do is when I make these graphics, I'll make a new document and I'll always do it 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. That's a pretty good resolution. And then what I do is you go to add and then insert a photo and you just scale it up on the artboard. And then what I use is an Apple Pencil. And Apple Pencil is really good for drawing. Um, this layer, what I'll do is I'll turn down the opacity to, you know, like 30% or so. And the one brush that I almost always use, also make a new layer. So when you draw in there, you're not drawing on that partially uh, transparent layer. I always use the studio pen for 80 to 90% of drawing. And this is a built-in brush in Procreate. It's in the inking section, studio pen. And the good thing about this is it, it just makes really nice lines. And obviously that's too thin, so you can scale up the size of your brush. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of draw this out. That's a little too thick. Kind of once you, once you get your kind of your baseline weight, I'll usually just stick with that. And so I'm just gonna draw this thing out. And there, now it's done. Typically, I'll just draw in black and white. Um, that way I can get clean vector lines 
and I'll just share that as a PNG to my Mac and we'll go from there. Okay, so now I'm on my Mac, on my desktop, and I have this file in here. So I'm just gonna bring this into Adobe Photoshop. Again, that's a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel file. If this isn't flattened, go ahead and flatten it. And then I'll make a duplicate layer. So just drag it down here. That's how you can make a duplicate layer. And I'll just give it a little blur. So let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And what you're gonna to wanna to do here is, this will just help you smooth out any little rough edges or weirdness. I'm gonna blur this quite a bit, like 4.2 pixels. So this is the blurred version. That's a layer below that's not blurred. And when I go image adjustments threshold, you'll see how it, it kind of rounds out all this stuff. So it gives it actually a nice look. Um, I'm just gonna click okay. So see how this palm tree looks? This palm frond here. If I make this layer invisible, that's the original art below. So it looks a little more kind of just computery and, and um, kind of, it looks like it's drawn in Procreate. Once you do the blur, and then the, the threshold, it, it kind of gives it a different quality. So I'm just gonna run with that. You'll see here on this palm tree, the edge of that is kind of blown out, but I like how that looks. What I'll do here is select all, Command or Control A, and then copy. And let's go into W Illustrator, make a new file. Doesn't really matter the resolution. I'm just gonna do a 24, 100 by 2400 pixel file and go command V to paste this in. Now, all I'm gonna do here, let's zoom in, is a uh, image trace. So just go to image trace. This is black and white, so I can just use the default settings, which actually work quite well. And this converts it to vector. What you're gonna wanna do is click expand. Now, so you have the black and the white vectors Typically, I'll just select some of the white. I go to the, um, see the white arrow tool? That's a direct selection tool. I'll just select some of that white and select same fill color and just hit delete. And that's essentially it. You know, if you want to add some text, what I'll do here is I'll grab the ellipse tool and shift drag circle, return that to a stroke. And let's select our type along path tool, which is this right here. And then now we can say um, icons collection, which is what this is in, but you could, you know, obviously use your own text. And that text goes to the bottom there. So I'll just drag that whole circle around and I'm gonna use a uh, font called Arvo. It's a kind of a slab serif modern font. So that's my process for creating vector graphics for t-shirts. I'll put a link in the description to the Skelly app as well as Icons Collection. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're watching this on Instagram or Facebook, be sure to follow and you'll see more videos like this. And that's it, thanks for watching.